How's it going today, YouTube? This is OCD for EDC here. And what I got for your face balls today is a bit of, uh, I guess we could call this a financial tip. <laughs> so this here, what we're looking at is the real steel Griffin. This thing's been around for a little while. This is not a brand new knife uh, for those that don't know. Um, I don't. I think this has been around a couple, two or three years, maybe, maybe even longer than that. Um, anyway, for the purposes of this video, we're actually going to call this guy the Pordax. So, for the rest of you people out there that uh, don't have a Mordax and would like to own one, this is a really, really good budget option. Um, you know, the Mordax looks like a great knife, and. Uh, I guess for those that don't know what a Mordax is, um, if you go to Drop or what used to be Mass Drop, now called Drop, uh, they're selling the uh, Ferrum Forge uh, ProTech collaboration, I guess Ferrum Forge design built by ProTech uh, manual button lock flipper uh, called the Mordax. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, before we get too deep into this, we'll uh, do a couple of the the YouTube standard uh, size comparisons here. So that's the uh, Spyderco Manix 2, and this is Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight. And here is the uh, Benchmade Bug Out. And we'll throw one other one in here. This will probably be pretty close in size here. This is the uh, Buck Marksman. Uh, 830. Well, this one here is actually the SK Blades Inferno uh, that I've customized. But uh, yeah, for those that have never checked out this knife, really great knife. I've actually done a done a full review on this guy. Uh, really, really cool knife. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. So, what are we looking at here? So this is a made by Real Steel, um, and what we've got here is. 6160 uh, aluminum scales and then it's uh, black anodized I don't know if you can get these in any other colors I've only ever seen them in black uh, but they may be available in other colors you can see here on the show side pretty clean um, it uh, doesn't have a tool end on the pivot here so it is a captured pivot and you'll see that later I'll disassemble this knife so you can see how it's uh, put together but it's just uh, a standard button lock. Action on this guy is fantastic. The, so your opening uh, method here is that hole in the blade. So you can, uh, you know, spidey flick it, thumb flick it, you know, of course, two-hand it. You can also push down on the button and just whip it out similar to a, you know, kind of access lock sort of deal. Uh, so, you know, does have a lot of opening options to it. Uh, the Griffin happens to be in uh, 14C28N blade steel. So, you know, uh, the Mordax comes aluminum scales uh, and a few different milling patterns, but uh, and it comes with 20CV blade steel. So, of course, you know, on the blade steel, this isn't the greatest comparison. We've got uh, 14C28N uh, compared to 20CV. However, uh, you know, 14C28N is a really great blade steel. I've been certainly happy with that steel over the years, and uh, I'm happy with it on this knife. It performs extremely well, and for the money difference, uh, yeah, it's it's significant. So let's get into it. Uh, size on this guy, we're looking at eight and a quarter inches overall. On the Mordax, you're looking at eight and a quarter inches overall. Blade stock or a blade length on this knife here is 3.55 inches. On the Mordax, 3.6 inches. <laughs> so you can see where I'm going with this, guys. Handle length <clears throat> on this knife here, you've got just barely shy of four and five eighths. On the Mordax, it is 4.6 or is essentially four and five eighths. Um, so dimensionally, these knives are literally 
I mean, they couldn't be closer. It's they're literally identical. Um, both have a forward choil. Uh, really, the only functional difference in the two knives is the Mordax has a flipper tab. Uh, and it's basically the only method. Of, there is no hole in the blade or anything for doing, you know, spider flicking and that sort of stuff. But uh, so you've got a flipper tab on the Mordax. You do not have that here. So <clears throat> otherwise, dimensionally, uh, we'll continue going down here. Thickness. The Griffin here, or the what we'll call the Portax, um, is 0.47 inches thick, so just under a half inch, and the Mordax is a half inch thick. Uh, blade stock on this knife, you've got 130 thousandths uh, blade stock thickness up here. On the Mordax is 120 thousandths, so you are about 10 thousandths thinner on that 20 CV blade. Uh, and then Behind the edge thickness, I personally have not handled a Mordax yet, um, so I don't know what the behind the edge thickness is on that guy, but I can tell you on this guy here, you're looking at 18 thousandths. So on this uh, Sandvik steel blade, this 14C28N, it's a nice flat ground, full flat grind, uh, and you're coming down to 18 thousandths behind the edge. So let's uh, weigh this guy up really quick here. And see what we got. So, you know, just a little bit under three and a half ounces. And the Mordax ranges from, if you get the milled version, is 3.6. And the full slab version, similar to this knife, is 3.85 ounces. So this guy's a little bit lighter than the, uh, than the, the Mordax. But as you can see, action on this guy you know it does all the things a button lock should do you know it's really great super super fidgety uh, and just works works really well <clears throat> so moving on here we've got a you know stamp steel pocket clip it does have uh, quite a bit of retention it's fine getting in and out of the pocket but you may want to loosen it up a little bit it is a little tight um but, you know, you can just bend that up a little bit to kind of loosen the tension on it. It is not a deep carry. Uh, so you're going to have, you know, this much sticking out of your pants pocket. It's not terrible. You know, in this black, it, it looks nice. But <clears throat> it's all open construction. Uh, you have just the one standoff back here. And then you've got this lock here. So when the blades open, uh, this lock, it rotates forward. And... Uh, it just prevents the button from being pushed all the way so the blade won't won't close on you so if you if you are were using this thing and you did happen to you know push that button during use it's it's not going to close on you um but you know the forward choil is usable the handle you've got kind of these uh, scalloped areas some uh chamfering and it does make for you know kind of a few uh prominent areas that kind of direct your fingers into locations but you can see here you know it lines up pretty good it's it's pretty comfy uh you know for a kind of a in my opinion i guess this is kind of a smaller full-size edc knife it's a you know it's not really large in any dimension uh but <clears throat> but it, it works well you know it uh, fits well in the hand you've got a few different grip options you got some nice jimping up here on the on the top of the spine, and uh, yeah, you know the the plunge grind was done really well, and you can see the the button lock uh, area there, and so yeah, this is uh, really nicely done. It's one of my favorite pieces from Real Steel, and uh, it happens to be a budget option, which we're going to get into the price because that's the big reason for even talking about this knife. So <clears throat> anyway, let's, uh, we'll start tearing this guy down here real quick. Um, so what you've got uh, on the pivot, you've got a, uh, a T8 hardware on the pivot and a T6 uh, screw back here on this uh, standoff. And, you know, I'd rather see a T8 front and rear, but... You know, it is what it is. So one of the cool things about this knife and one of the big reasons that, that I got this knife, honestly, because I just really 
like the way it's constructed here. So you can see the, the scales, there is no weight relieving and mainly, you know, you don't see too often that they do a lot of weight relieving on aluminum knives, but uh, you can see the cup there for the, the spring for the button lock. You can see the milled out area for the bearings there. <clears throat> so, you know, nicely done. The uh, anodizing is, is nice. So here is, oops. Before I pull any of that apart, just showing you what's going on here. So this knife actually has got these little phosphor bronze washers that sit underneath the bearings on this guy. And I'm guessing they just did that for tolerances. Uh, but uh, let me get this off of here. So you can see the button here, guys, in the spring. Pretty simple design, you know, just standard button lock. But this is what I really dig about this knife. So this guy has got needle bearings instead of ball bearing. Um, and they are a caged and they, uh, you know, a full assembled bearing. And it spins inside the bearing race there. Um, and so you've got caged needle bearings, which is really cool. And, you know, having the needle bearings in comparison to the ball bearing, it just works out extremely well because you... Uh, you have more <clears throat> lateral stability on the blade. Uh, so, yeah, it's just really well done, and it just offers up really, really great stability on the blade. So this thing, <clears throat> you know, is rock solid. It has zero blade play in any direction. The button lock is uh, done extremely well, and here we can see that lock. Oh. And I just... Uh... So you can see there, there's a little spring, little wire spring inside there. Let me get that back in. All right. So you can see here, you can rotate it, and then it, that corner there blocks off the button just like that. All right. So here's your pivot. You can see the D shape there. Pretty straightforward. Hmm. Little bastard cut me. I poked the end of my finger. Anyway, um, let's check out this blade here, guys. <clears throat> So like I said, 14C28N, you can see the cups here for the, the button lock, and then it uh, locks up right here. You've got kind of your angled area there for for the, the button. And, you know, just a really nicely done blade. Uh, the edges of the spine are, are chamfered nicely, so nothing's like crazy sharp or anything. I mean, it is squared off, but the edges are softened just a bit. So... Uh, let's go ahead and put this guy back together. So the way that I like to do this, you got to kind of uh, put the button in as you go on this deal. So for those that have never disassembled a button lock, you want to have your blade in there at the same time as your button, just like that. So this guy's pretty straightforward, but drop that coil spring in there. And then I just take the bearing race and set it on this side here. And like I said, there is a, the phosphor bronze washer. It has one on each side that just sits at the base here. And I'm, you know, assuming they just use them as a shim um, for manufacturing tolerances. But, uh, and then, so your cup there for your button lock just needs to sit over that spring and the cup there for the button. And then... Uh, yeah, you just go ahead and push her down, get it lined up here, let me slide it off, perfect, that's it. So, <clears throat> the reason that I am doing this is because the minute that I saw the Mordax, um, you know, I thought it was a really good looking knife. I really like it. I really dig the blue color that they have is cool. Um, but to me, it just seems overpriced for what it is. And uh, so that knife has multiple different options. You can get a few different colors and you can get it with a milled pattern or without. If you guys haven't seen it, you should run over to drop and check it out. It's a cool looking knife for sure. Is it worth the 230 to... 270 or 80 or whatever it is that they're asking i just i don't know 
I have a hard time with that one. It just doesn't seem like it's that nice of a knife. I mean, it's cool, and don't get me wrong, I, I like it. Um, but is it is it that nice? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> maybe at some point when I have one in hand, I'll feel differently about it. But guys, this particular knife, you can pick this thing up. This thing's readily available. They're for sale, you know, any place that sells real steel. And I think you can find it, you know, online, multiple different places. Uh, you know, it, yeah, I'm sure you could probably buy this thing on Amazon or whatever, eBay. Who, who knows? I, I don't know. You check it out. Real Steel Griffin. But I know um, that you can get it anywhere from, say, like, I've seen it as low as, I think, $39.95. Um, and I think I've seen it upwards of around $55. So we'll say the range is like 40 to 55 bucks. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's a hell of a nice knife for that kind of money. I mean, yeah, you're not getting 20 CV blade steel and I get all that. And I'm not saying that this is a, you know, a better knife than the Mordax. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is for people that don't want to spend that kind of money and want to have the same very, very similar experience as far as action is concerned, uh, you know, handle material is the same. The Mordax is, is running aluminum exactly like this guy is. Um, and, you know, the action on this guy is, you know, again, I haven't handled a Mordax, but I, I really don't think that it's going to be any better than this knife is. I mean, the action on this knife is absolutely just, uh, you know, it does all the right things. So, <clears throat> so if you want, to, uh, want to experience a nice button lock that isn't going to break the bank, real steel Griffin, for whatever reason, I just don't think this knife got as much, uh, you know, it wasn't quite as popular as I kind of feel that it should have been. Maybe it was a little ahead of its time. It seems like everybody's coming out with button locks now. You know, you've got the the uh, the Mordax, and then you also have got the uh, Medford uh, Smooth Criminal, uh, which is also a really, really cool knife. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, buttons, button locks are are really, really fantastic. I really enjoy button locks. Um, as long as they're done well, you know, if they're done well, then it's, uh, a great, great thing. I've certainly seen some shitty ones over the years, but, uh, this one here happens to be done extremely well. You know, it's not a bad looking knife. Um, you know, I don't really care so much about the, the lock, but you know, it doesn't hurt anything being there, you know, it's never in the way or anything like that. So I'm totally fine with that. Um, but, uh, you know, Hogue makes a lot of good button locks and so does Protec. Protec makes some really great button locks as well. Um, but I don't know of any other company that makes this good of a button lock for this kind of money. So I think, uh, the Tangram, there was a Tangram one. I think the Vector maybe, uh, was a button lock knife that was also similar money, you know, 30, 40 bucks, maybe 50 bucks. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I didn't like the Vector as well as I like the Griffin. I think the Griffin's just a cooler knife. And they do make a high-end Griffin with, uh, I think it's M390 and titanium. I think it's titanium with like carbon fiber inlays. Um, and that's like 200 bucks. So, so you can get a real steel knife with the equivalent of 20 CV. And it has titanium scales with carbon inserts. Uh, Still the same action, button lock, still on the same uh, needle bearings, just like this guy is. Uh, and and it's even cheaper than the Mordax. So, anyway, guys, <clears throat> we should probably rename this thing Real Steel Pordax. So, yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you next time.